You know, our movies sometimes start with a big crazy scene to leave you wondering what the heck is going on. This is my try to do this. Like, for real. Can you hear it? I even have my mouth open to show you how amazed I am. Oh, and by the way, I'm Joe. And this is the story how I climbed the world's biggest pyramid in my girlfriend's flip-flops. I can honestly say that this adventure started out the same way as most of my evenings do. I was sitting in my hotel room watching some weird videos. By the way, this is a reenactment. I don't actually film myself all the time. Until I found this video by my favorite YouTubers, The Yes Theory. Like no kidding, they put together a team of my other favorite YouTubers and went on this crazy adventure. And I was like, oh my God, I wanna do that as well. But uh, as it turns out, it's not that easy putting together a good team. Hey, Cristiano, you wanna go to the jungle? You saying, I know you're good at running, but have you ever tried hiking? Roger, what do you think of Guatemala? And when this didn't work out, I even tried the same guys that went with yesterday. Hey, Sorel. Andreas, Sam, Chelsea. I honestly figured that they've already done it once, and if we get lost, then we at least have somebody who knows the way back. Well, yeah, you guessed it. No luck. Luckily, I remembered that I have a girlfriend and I was like, hey, hey babe, babe, wanna go to the jungle? And she was like, yeah, yeah sounds, sounds cool. cool. I probably should have told her more. <laughs> Boy. And all of this brings us to the morning of the adventure. Our journey started around 5 a.m. from Flores, northern Guatemala. And every kilometer forward seemed to be taking us a year back in time. Soon, the power lines disappeared. Mobile reception followed. And honestly, it didn't bother us much. Even here in the middle of nowhere, they still have proper football fields. And as it turns out, the football field is not only for football players. Even the constant road stops that are meant to stop the activity of hostile anti-government groups didn't scare us. Four hours later, we had made it to Carmelita the last inhabited place before the jungle takes over. Life here is a little bit different. No electricity, no reception. I haven't seen one electric line. Just like 100 years ago, but with the difference that now there's plastic trash everywhere laying on the ground. And so it begins. For the next five days, we are gonna spend in Guatemalan jungle, hiking to a place called El Mirador, which is an ancient Mayan city. <laughs> the jungle here is quite unique. It's home to endangered big cats, like jaguars and pumas. We were just said that that mark on the ground is made by Puma to mark the territory and it had a little bit of like cat pee smell around it as well. And every now and then there's a group of monkeys that comes to say hello. First animals on a truck, 
of his few monkeys up there. And I'm quite sure that it was intentional. They were throwing big branches at us. They were literally breaking them loose. So I guess we were at their territory and they didn't really enjoy our company. In dry season, canopy is the only thing protecting you from the sun. But it's still hot, so hot indeed, that both my hands and feet got inflamed and swollen. It only took few hours for my feet not to fit in my shoes anymore, and the result was painful. I knew that for the rest of this trip, shoes were not an option. I had to hike the distance of more than two marathons in my flip-flops on a terrain that was not only rough but where spiders, scorpions and snakes lurked under the dry leaves on forest floor. Getting to our first camp was a relief. We ate and by sunset climbed our first pyramid. The relief only lasted for a little while. No, toca. <laughs> Lisa, what happened? No, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really expect that. But now everything that you're gonna put on is gonna be double checked for scorpions, spiders, <laughs> and we'll see what's gonna be next one. Maybe snakes. It's quite a magnificent feeling waking up to the sound of the jungle, like. Well, now we're gonna go for a longer stay hike yet. And I'm gonna do it in flip flops. Second day started early and with an amazing realization that we were too tired to understand the day before. Because it's hot and sweaty. Only fans. It wasn't just a pretty forest anymore. That one there, it was the floor. Back in the day, it's man made out of uh, cement. It was something like an open air museum. And we started to see signs of an ancient civilization all around us. <laughs> Through this thick jungle where we are walking now, there was a white road that was 30 meters wide, three meters high, and 200 kilometers long. The amount of material and the amount of manpower that it took. The lime cement that they used a lot to make the buildings requires a lot of resources. To make one ton of stucco, it takes five tons of wood and five tons of limestone. By the end of second day, we had made it to the heart of ancient Mayan civilization, the city of El Mirador. We discovered parts of this city, its temples, pyramids. It smells in here like the air has been stuck here for 3,000 years? Yes. Maybe one and a half thousand years. Quite Not a lot of room in here. And I just broke my flip-flop, no! I kind of want to show right on the spider as well, because it is, <laughs> if it moves, I'm going to piss myself. Okay. Where is it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go to the spider. Bye! Bye! Oh, yeah. Run! <laughs> We're absolutely amazed that this place had once 200,000 people living in it and was one of the biggest cities in the world in that time. It's 
even hard to imagine what might have once been here. It was one of the biggest cities in the world. Probably full of laughter, full of music. Yet now, the whole place had been claimed by the forest. This is how nature takes back what once belonged to it. Inch by inch, the roots just press through the stone, the cement, the buildings. <laughs> Great Mayan cities like El Mirador and Tikal were abandoned before Europeans made it to Americas. Mayans used enormous amounts of wood and other natural resources to build their cities and keep their civilization thriving. It is now thought that deforestation is one of the big reasons why those cities were abandoned, as well as constant wars amongst Mayans themselves. We enjoyed the sunset on yet another pyramid and could only imagine what this place was like 2,000 years ago. It's really hard to believe that this over there is the biggest pyramid in the world. Sleep came easily that night, and even the screams from the campsite that probably marked yet another scorpion didn't bother us. And then, around 4 a.m., this happened. Howler monkeys. A sound like no other in the animal kingdom. Their screams also marked the highlight of our trip. I had broken my flip-flops the day before, so I had to borrow Lisus. It was quite extreme, hiking in beach darkness, with shoes about six numbers small, and something constantly poking my heel that was hanging over the edge of the shoe. So there I was, on top of world's biggest pyramid, in my girlfriend's flip-flops. And yet I couldn't help but wonder that us and the Mayans, we are not that different. We too are unsustainably cutting down our forests. We too are fighting our neighbors for unjustified reasons. The only big difference I see between us is that we have not yet gone too far and can still make changes in our lifestyles and live more sustainably so that not only our children but also their children could enjoy the beauty of this planet that was gifted to us by our forefathers. <laughs>